Hey Zwifters, welcome back to my video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Zwift Hub. This is Zwift's flagship trainer, and this is actually their first ever trainer that they have made, and it comes in at a pretty amazing price of $499, and it really is a competitive trainer. So, let's dive into the video. First off, let's do a bit of an overview with some specs. This trainer, as I said earlier, comes in at a price of $499 US, and it includes the opportunity to choose your own cassette, so it ranges from an eight speed to a 12 speed, and that is the main range of cassettes that riders are gonna be using on Zwift. And then in addition to that, it was released, I think October, 2022. So it's been out for almost a year now. And so far, um, the reviews have been very positive and everything has been very positive, but I'm gonna be giving my personal thoughts on this trainer, including some specs, my thoughts, noise level, and all that fun stuff. And in the end, I'm gonna be answering the question of whether this trainer is the ultimate mid-range trainer. So a bit more on the specs section. Um, the, the trainer itself weighs 15 kilograms or 33 pounds. So it's pretty heavy, but it's not anything crazy. I'd say taxing your 2T is definitely heavier. And it has a claim power accuracy of plus or minus 2.5%. So very solid accuracy, but not quite enough to compete with the top end trainers. And it has a max power of 1,800 watts. Most riders won't be hitting that kind of power, but if you do, you have that assurance that it can hit up to 1,800. Max gradient simulation is 16%, so still not quite as much as the top trainers, which cost around 1,000 ish. And those typically max out around 24 to 25%, but the Zwift Hub is at 16. And the flywheel weight is 4.7 kilograms, so it's it's not extremely heavy, but it is a pretty solid weight for a flywheel, and that really helps it feel more realistic, and it just helps the overall ride feel a ton. As usual with most of our trainers, it can transmit power, cadence, speed, and distance all through Bluetooth or AMP Plus. Another thing that is available is the ability to relay AMP Plus connections to Bluetooth. So that's really, really useful for um, if you, you are using an Apple TV, you can just pair an AMP Plus hardware monitor to the trainer and then you can use the Wolf Companion to pair it to the TV. And that's actually really, really handy for um, Apple TV users. And that's a very welcome feature on this device. All right, so I am gonna be talking a bit about the actual setup of this trainer. The setup I found was really simple and it already came with the cassette pre-installed. And since you can choose which cassette you want, you basically don't have to take the cassette off pretty much ever, unless you do end up replacing it down the road. So you can really just take your back wheel off and then put it on the trainer and you're all good to go. And that was a really nice experience for me because I didn't have to uninstall a cassette from a different trainer and put it on. It was always a hassle to switch the cassettes around, but Zwift already has it pre-installed, which is really handy. And then another thing with the setup is that Zwift has all their instruction manuals that are really intuitive and helpful. And they actually have videos for everything. So you don't really need to know anything um, going into this. You don't need to really know anything about bikes in general. You just need to read the instruction manual and you should be able to figure it out. All right, so moving on to portability. This trainer is not portable at all. You can't really fold anything in. It's kind of in a fixed position. So the only thing you really do is take the legs off, which is useless because laying it on the side is not good for the trainer. And I wouldn't really recommend doing that. So there really isn't much you can do from the um, portability standpoint. I'd say trainers like the Elite Suito or the Taxing 2T are quite a bit more portable and there's no handle or anything to lift it around. You gotta just like hold it awkwardly and scoot it around if you're trying to move it somewhere. So in terms of portability, it's not the best, but in terms of other aspects such as power accuracy and everything, it is spot on. And we're gonna be talking about that a bit later in the video. All right, so I have been testing this trainer for a bit now, and uh, I want to make a comment about the ride feel. I said the ride feel feels pretty similar to the likes of the Wahoo Kicker Core or the Elite uh, Suito T. Uh, th these all feel pretty similar because they have a very similar flywheel weight, and the overall design of most smart trainers around that mid-range uh, zone, it does feel pretty much the same across the board. And the only trainers that I'd say really feel different 
are the Wahoo Kicker Bike and the Taxneo 2T because they use different kinds of systems to get everything going. And um, the, the Taxneo 2T actually has a virtual flywheel as opposed to a physical one like the Zwift Hub. All right, so moving on to the noise level of this trainer. This trainer I found is virtually silent is the term I believe, because you really can't hear anything coming from the trainer itself. It's actually all coming from the cassette and gears and the other parts in your bike. So if you're looking to quiet down your trainer, or actually your bike in that case, um, the best way to do it would actually be lubing it or replacing the cassette or the gears, um, because that's the derailleur and the cassette, the chain, are the ones making the noise. It's not so much the trainer itself. Um, so I've found that that is pretty standard across all the, uh, all the trainers these days. Most of them are virtually silent and the main now noise is your drivetrain. So digging into the power accuracy, um, you can see here that I'm currently displaying a uh, data set that I ha have from a race that I did that was around 26 miles. So it's a pretty long and hard race and there are some sprints in there. There are some KOMs with high gradients. So I want to give everything a test and I'm comparing it to my power tap pedals, which are dual sided. Um, so they are pretty reliable in terms of power accuracy, but they aren't exactly plus or minus 1%. I believe they're plus or minus two, I think. Um, so they are still pretty accurate, but they're not the most accurate. So just keep that in mind when viewing the data set. You can see here that there is not much discrepancy um, between the trainer and the power meter pedals. So across the board, some pretty good results from the Zwift Hub, considering it is a $499 trainer. Now, as I said, as I briefly mentioned earlier, it doesn't quite hit that threshold of plus or minus 1.5%, which is, I believe, what you need in order to compete in the UCI sanctioned Zwift events or the more professional level events. Uh, you will need a higher end trainer to participate in those events. But I'd say for the masses, to plus or minus 2.5%, you won't really notice a difference. There's no power accuracy issues with this trainer whatsoever when it is calibrated properly. So now moving on to a bit of a different section that I don't actually have on for most of my reviews, and that's special features. The Zwift Hub does come with a slate of special features, and I do know that I do think that there are more to come in the future because the Jet Black Volt is showing promising results with uh, Jet Black, and they're making really quick innovations, and that's bringing things like 10 hertz frequency, which is the one I'm most excited about, and that um, increases the transfer rate for those who don't know, and that's really helpful for racing because your power data actually updates quicker than it normally would. So another thing that came to the Zwift Hub earlier was auto calibration. And auto calibration did allow so that you don't have to manually calibrate your trainer every so often. It now just does it automatically once you hit a certain speed at a certain time. So very useful feature and that just eliminates a lot of the stress of what if I didn't calibrate my trainer? Will it be inaccurate for this race? You don't actually have to worry about that anymore because it is auto calibrated. All right, so now wrapping up this video and answering the question that I have in the title, is this the ultimate mid-range trainer? Now this trainer can be compared to trainers like the Elite Suito or trainers like the Wahoo Kicker Core when it's on sale. Um, and it, honestly, the Zwift Hub is the most competitively uh, priced smart trainer out there. It includes a ton of features that you only see on the top trainers that cost around $1,000. And that's all packaged into this $499 trainer. So overall, is it the best mid-range trainer? I'd say so. It comes with a ton of features and there isn't really anything it's missing compared to its uh, competitors. So it really checks all the boxes in terms of power accuracy, noise level, ease of use, and portability. Portability is not that portable, but smart trainers, they're not really portable in general. You can't really find a really, really portable smart trainer that you can store nicely. I say the best one that I've seen so far is Elite Suito, but that's mainly because of its design um, with how it's actually looking but um, most trainers have a flywheel in a different place, and that's a whole other story. Overall, this trainer was a pleasure to test, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like subscribe button, and see you all in the next one. Ride on.